Well, a new venture aims to help people navigate through fake news on social media. A recent study reveals nearly half of adults in the U.S. sometimes or often use social media as a news source. But both Facebook and Twitter acknowledge that Russian propaganda reached more than 126 million Americans through their platforms around the 2016 election. NewsGuard Technologies is a new $6 million venture that will launch this fall to battle so-called fake news. The startup will use anal analysts to research and rate thousands of news sources. They hope to license their finding to social media companies and other platforms. NewsGuard Technologies co-founder Stephen Brill is an author, journalist, entrepreneur. Welcome, Steve. <laughs> Thanks for being Morning. with us. Morning. So tell us how this is going to work. Well. We're going to apply uh, common sense to a problem that the algorithms haven't been able to solve. We're going to hire uh, dozens of journalists to read and review the 7,500 news and information sites that are responsible for 98 percent of the consumption in the United States. And it's going to be very simple. They're going to be charged with telling the difference between the Denver Post, which is a real newspaper, mm -hmm. and the Denver Guardian, which is a hoax site. And what will people get once these uh, reporters look at these? There will they'll be a see, red, green, or yellow, right? Uh, they'll see a red, green, and yellow, and if they mouse over that, they'll see a two or three hundred word uh, description called a nutrition label that will tell them the background of the publication, who owns it, uh, what their history is, are they responsible, who's behind it, how do they complain if they have a complaint about something. Um, on the other hand, if the news site is, let's say, um, um, an information thing about, uh, you know, fracking, and it's financed by the American Petroleum Institute, they'll see that too, and that'll probably be a yellow. It's a great idea, Steve, because sometimes when you're online, if you don't know, it really is hard to tell the difference. But don't you have to have the cooperation of Facebook, Twitter, and some of these online sites? To uh, there make are about a work? half a dozen of them uh, that, we, uh, that we think will want to license the data, plus the advertising agencies will want to license it so they can keep their ads off of uh, the fake sites. And uh, what we're asking them in terms of licensing fees is a fraction of what they're paying uh, their PR firms and uh, their lawyers uh, to talk about how hard the problem is to solve. Do Thanks. most of them seem interested? Quite interested, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, Facebook did this, but in reverse. For their What's Trending app, they had uh, people initially going through it, right? And then right. they were accused of being biased, and then they turned to algorithms, which right. got us to where we are now. How are you going to uh, avoid being accused of bias? Well, first of all, uh, when Facebook did it, they didn't tell you who the people were. Um, we will list the backgrounds and the names of everybody doing every review. We will take all kinds of complaints. The complaints will be public. We'll have an appeal system. And uh, probably equally important, what we're doing is not quite as uh, presumptuous as that. We're saying there is a real difference between the Denver Guardian, which is a fake site, and uh, the Denver Post. And if the Denver Guardian wants to game our algorithm, which isn't an algorithm, they just have to start doing uh, real news and be accountable for it um, and tell people who they are. Steve, how do you manage... You want to be gamed. <laughs> how do you manage the difference between ideological reporting and straight-up reporting? Because some, as you know, ide sure. people who come with an ideological bent can report the dickens out of a story and get it right, but they're still coming at it with an ideological bent. That's where the nutrition labels come in. Um, uh, there's obviously a difference between The Nation magazine and, and uh, The National Review, but they're both you know, uh, legitimate news organizations who try to get it right. They just come at it from a different perspective. If you click on the uh, nutrition label for each, you will see exactly that in their own words what they say their missions are. President Trump uses the term fake news very liberally. Some people yeah. say he uses that term when it's an unflattering story about him or his administration. How do you define fake news? Something that is uh, deliberately aimed at uh, defrauding you. It's a hoax or uh, it's uh, you know propaganda from uh, the Russian government. This comes in an era of extreme uh, tribalism, people sticking with their own silos. Are you concerned at all that people may want to continue that trend, that they may not be interested in knowing what's real and what's not? They want to stick with what their, their current source of information. If it's feeding them the news they want to hear. Sure. That comes under the category of us uh, acknowledging that we are going to not solve all the problems of the world. Um, you know, in a world in which 
you know, a certain percentage of people think, you know, uh, that 9-11 was an inside job by the Bush administration, and another percentage think that, you know, the president, of, uh, the president Obama was not born in the United States. We're not going to satisfy everybody, but we are going to equip people to understand the basics behind the headlines that they're seeing on uh, their searches and on their feeds. Well, thank you for beginning to address this issue. I know you've raised some $6 million thus far. Uh, best of luck in Thanks. your endeavors. Thank you. We appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. Appreciate it. CBSN gets what kind of rating? Oh, I wouldn't dare comment on anybody's rating. Yeah. A plus in our books. Yes, I say A plus. Stephen Brill, that's not fake news. With no bias. Yes. <laughs>